All right, hey, it's Joel from the Hack Life, and I'm here with my boy AD, the creator of It's Phones. Dot com, uh, who makes some amazing EMF blocking underwear, which we're going to get into today. I have a couple pairs and they're super comfortable and nice. And, you know, some listeners may not even know what EMFs are. So we're going to dive into that. But um, welcome, man. Welcome to the show. Dude, it's a blast, man. We've all been having fun. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, hey, just to start things off, I thought it'd be nice for, for you just to kind of tell everybody, like, you know, it's not, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't your dream in life to create EMF blocking underwear and clothing. So like, how did you like, what was the day you realized like, you know what, I'm going to kind of stop whatever else I'm doing in life. And I'm going to, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start creating this kind of EMF blocking clothing. I came out of the womb, like <laughs> desiring to, <laughs> with a cone head, I like almost died as a, as a child. I was like in the incubator for, for days and uh, and made it out alive and um eventually ended up in china for like seven years like got mixed up in some corruption like like ip business stuff kind of like with some french criminals and whatnot and i I got out i was able to to get back to the u.s with like this new view on life like through the trials and tribulations and never realized that uh, phones use EMF to work until I got to New York mm-hmm. and um, basically realized that phones were, were causing damage to, to our bodies and uh, started looking for solutions. Hold on, go real back real quick. You said uh, something about China and French corruption. <laughs> How old were you when this was going on? Oh, man, this was in my early 20s when uh, we were representing foreign clients okay and uh and we were doing undercover uh, spying stuff in in china and looking for uh fake products mm. and um in order to like actually well, we could find them but actually like to seize them and to and to take them away we had to collaborate with the chinese government which yeah whoa was not free <laughs> so you were you were kind of in this um you know, this limbo stage for a while is what you're saying. Um, so this is, this was like 10 years ago, I'd say, uh, in a previous life. Yes. And, and, and when I left China, when Xi Jinping came into power, um, I wanted to start a company. I wanted to, I had this feeling to like save the world, um, and, and do something like really impactful. Yeah that yeah. could sort of redefine or, or actually like hop on the bandwagon of how business uh, is starting to be done where, you know, businesses have huge impact on all business really does on society, but oftentimes negatively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and without like consideration of the environment. So when we do things like use organic materials in our, in our products and uh, make sure that we're uh, being as truthful as we can on the 5g front uh, to make sure that society is, you know, um, they, they get the facts, which oftentimes in, in the mainstream media today with police videos and and presidential mishaps and, and everything else, um, we, we are totally brainwashed. Totally. Coming from coming from China. On that note, just uh, OK, when you just said something uh, powerful. You said um, 5G. So is that a problem for you? I mean, do you think um, are you, are you know, are you worried about that? I mean. I would say like most of the world's there's there's people like us right in this biohacking world. We talk about it all the time. We talk about EMFs, we talk about all these things. But there's a lot of people who aren't even talking about it, and they think 5G is a good thing, right? Like dude, what are you are you crazy? Like these idiots um you know, here's some like things I've heard, right? These idiots think the coronavirus was called caused by 5G. People are burning down 5G towers. What a bunch of morons. Like um so you know, when you think of 5G and you know, what do you what comes to your mind, I guess, when you think about that? I think of 5G. Okay, so I wear like many hats and the business side of me thinks that, you know, 5G is going to be spectacular for the economy. It's what's going to drive us into the into the next decade. Yeah. And we're competing, we're competing on, on a global stage with, you know, other countries. Speaking from an American standpoint, from, from like a phone standpoint, um, we need to protect ourselves. You know, 5G is 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 dangerous, and 
and we need to we need to do things um, you know, on a policy level, which which is happening. But, but we also need to we need to make technology safer, not not just from from an EMF standpoint either, but also like psychologically. I mean, we're spending hours and hours of our lives, you know, connecting virtually with other people, which is beneficial and, and helpful. But um, you know, it, it, it's a net negative in most cases because we're um, irresponsible with 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 our use. And so I think these things should be put front and center. And when technology companies are, um, you know, going for profit over anything else or, or to take over the world or, or to do these things, then, you know, it puts the rest of society, a large majority, you know, above 90 percent really at risk. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, that's uh, I mean, I like your I like your take on it. You know, I've heard other people like Dave Asprey kind of say the same thing that, you know, is 5G good for our health no probably not there's probably there's actually a lot of studies that would say it's not good for your health like it's not a good thing um but hopefully well, there's innovation and in other people that are going to come out and find solutions for how we can have the 5g but also you know like you said come up with creative solutions to protect ourselves or make it safer right yeah so so the, so the thing one of the things i i am sort of frustrated about is that both sides of the 5g debate say that it hasn't been tested it has been tested ah. it was tested in, it was tested pre-1984 the epa published a report in 1984 on 5g frequencies showing the negative effects it's on our website oh wow and it, it's a super dense report um it requires like a like a sort of basic knowledge of physics to really get to the to the nitty-gritty yeah but um, I mean that that report clearly shows negative health effects on many systems of the body, to the skin, to different organs, to the brain. Um, it, it doesn't take like the sort of holistic approach. Like when we touch our phone, are we, you know, putting dangerous levels of EMF into our body? According to the policy, we're supposed to be, have the phone, you know, away from our away from our body and not touch it. But every time we do touch it. We're, we're, we're pretty, we're, so, so like the policies are very, very, um, undeveloped yeah. And, yeah. and have been driven really by, by industry. And, and so the, the best things that, um, that we can do today is, um, you know, there's lots of free things and, and also just be aware. And, and we, of course, we're making, uh, we're, we're doing solutions as well on, on that front. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. And, um, I'll have to, I'll link that, uh, I'll link to your website too. And this is all said and done in the show notes. So we'll put that all up there so people can go if they want to read the study and, and, and find out more about that. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar just on that note? Are you familiar? I know there's a book that I haven't had a chance to read yet and it talks kind of about, um, and this just came up recently because of the, uh, the C virus, the, the coronavirus, that yeah. every time there's like a major quote unquote pandemic, um, there is a change in the electromagnetic frequency. There's a, and I think going back to the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, they were talking about, Hey, during that time, like the radio was in, was invented, or I, I can't re recall exactly, but every time in human evolution, when there was a change in frequencies, there would, there would be a, a change in whatever, like the immunity and there would be a pandemic. And I've, and I know there's a book and I'll find it and I'll link to the show notes, uh, the book that I'm talking about. Have you read that book or heard anything about that? Just given with everything that's going on right now. <laughs> if you, I've not read that book, but, but yeah, there, I mean, there's, there's conspiracy theories that are based on, you know, somewhat a fact. And we saw what was going on in the UK, you know, that could very easily spread around the world. Uh, with social media these days, but you know, there's Facebook could could stamp that out. Twitter could stamp that out. You know, the Chinese government's pretty good at stamping that stuff out. I don't think that's the best solution yeah. to the 5G problem. It's it's one way to deal with it, which I think shouldn't be taken off the table, especially in, in when when we're negotiating with uh, with our lives. And and it, it, if it has to come to that point, like I'm ready, but. Um, But I think there there are better and more, more logical and reasonable ways to do that. Yeah. And and um, I mean, just getting out into nature and and, and doing your grounding and and uh, taking antioxidants and 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 wearing phones clothing and and um, you know just living a healthy life and and being responsible with how you use technology because the people working at technology companies are creating this technology 
Um, there may be one or two guys at the top who have you know, some tendencies that are putting the putting putting our, our world at danger, but um, most of society, you know, is being affected by EMF, um, if not all, but they they're not aware of it. So, um, I mean, it it could it, you know at, at this time with COVID, five G definitely affects immunity, right? Yeah. Um. So talk to me about uh, where we just left off when you're talking about you. So you came from China, you went to New York and then you were called to, to do what you do, which is making amazing underwear. And uh, I, also I went clothing. back to the Bay Area first. Okay. I went back to the Bay Area first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's talk about so that. I grew up in, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I, went, I did undergrad down in L.A. and then I was going to take a corporate tech job, actually. And the company got acquired and I was like, I'm going back to China. Did that, and then I came back to the Silicon Valley and was doing like political stuff, and um, got into VC and it was just exploring like different business ideas. And yeah, I was, I was in New York, and that's how I, that's how I stumbled on the idea. So yeah, so what happened in New York, and and what what uh, what do you mean you stumbled on the idea? Tell me more about that. <laughs> well, well, I had like the save the world sort of germ of an idea, and I was trying to figure out like what to do. You know, there's like climate change right which is which is huge and emf affects climate too emf is affecting animals like emf like water in the in the in the, in the atmosphere absorbs emf and then there's, there's there's like these satellites too coming from uh you know companies in, into the atmosphere and that emf does not leave so the amount of emf in, in coming into the industry uh coming into the atmosphere is increasing um and it's coming from like an alter, uh, as is like UV radiation, right? So, um, like the climate change was like too hard to prove with like EMF. Like how 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 could we create a solution that could, um, you know, you know, stop EMF by saying that it's causing climate change when there's like other there's probably other things that are doing more damage to the climate than um, than EMF, but. Um, Stumbled upon the the health issue in uh, in Central Park actually with Dr. Martin Blank, who is basically a godfather of EMF um, really knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Now does yeah biochemist he has at a, Columbia? Does he have a book or anything that we can? I, I've never heard of him. Yeah, he's written a few books okay. and I'm, I'm, and um, and papers and and lots of talks and and whatnot, um, but. He's since passed away. Okay. Uh, recently, and but he's he's a yeah he he was a great he was a great mentor, and um, actually I remember the time where I, we were walking in Central Park we were having we were having a chat about EMF, and I that's when I realized that I could feel my um, phone before it would ring. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, well, how is this happening? Like, what is going on? Yeah. And, um, yeah. and so, um, electro hypersensitivity is a thing. And it's actually not even officially uh, recognized here in the yeah. US. So you, you're feeling these, you're feeling, you're learning from this doctor, you're feeling these, this sensation that you're like, Man, this kind of doesn't seem normal, and that led you. Uh, what? Yeah, what did that lead you to? Well, to be honest, like I was, I was a little depressed in New York. So I think, I think my body state, like my biofield, my my natural sort of um, emission, was perhaps lower or higher, whatever that is. Yeah. The, the, we're starting to like learn more about that, and. I became more sensitive. I was a lot more sensitive. Like before I was mainly sort of a thinker personality wise and at, you know, getting depressed, I, I started to get in touch with my feelings, if you will. And, and was like being sensitive to these uh, sensations, I guess. And, and realized that I could, I could literally sense when, um, before my phone, like I can sense technology. Do you, sense EMF. Yeah, do you do you still do you still sense that or do you still have like that that you know that that awareness that that resonance that you're able to that sensitivity? Mm, or is that, has it it's gone? not as it's it's not as um it's not as noticeable as before. Yeah. 
sometimes 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 like before i'll get an email i'll like i don't know if it's like some sort of telepathic knowledge or anything but maybe it's, it's probably just a coincidence but if it happens like a lot of times one day and i'm like feeling a specific way i'm like hmm i think i feel that emf i think i feel that email and just so for people to understand, so when you're talking about EMF, we're talking about it's a acronym for electromagnetic frequencies. Now, you know more about it than I do, but there's some EMFs that are good for us, right? And then there's some that can just be, I guess, bad for us is just the simplest way to, to say it, right? All living things emit EMF. Like, I think of EMF in terms of vibration and energy, and it's like indicators of health. Yeah. And, and, and whatever is going to raise like our vibration, our EMF, our natural EMF and our magnetic resonance to like other humans of that resonance, I think is good. Yeah. And block blocking EMF does that. Um, it enables like our natural resonance to to shine, if you will. And um, and so. Yeah, e EMF is also you know used in bad ways. Um, I think in the 1800s, Mark, Mark Sony and uh an indian guy named uh, bose um started working on emf and figuring out how to decode or sorry encode um, data onto light waves hmm. and then um and then like the industrial revolution happened right like electricity and light bulbs and and then in the 90s we had the like a, literally a, a social revolution with cell phones like yeah. the last 20 years yeah. have just been absolutely godspeed in terms of change and we haven't really we had a chance to kind of slow down and realize like what has happened in like the last five years even yeah that's true that's a good point how how fat how, how much we've come in the last 20 years just the acceleration of of cell phones i mean i mean yeah i mean probably even in the early 90s it wasn't you know nobody had phones i mean even in early 2000 i i mean i, I was just graduating high school and i don't i didn't have a phone it wasn't and, you know, and now you just think of it like, how could you not have a phone? Like every kid should have a phone. What are you talking about? I got to, I'm going to pick you up from school. I got to call you on your phone. Whereas like that never happened before. So yeah, you're right. There's been a huge acceleration in the last mm. 20, 40 years. Yeah. Where's it going? Right. Who knows? I think that's, that's like the craziest thing to think about. I've been watching um, some economists talk on TV and, and they like seem very nervous and technology companies are acquiring and, and amassing like huge amounts of, of capital oh, yeah. and uh, pow and power. And so I, I think it is scary, but um, it, we shouldn't be scared. Um, so go back and so you're in New York, you're getting these sensations, you're this, these sensitivities and you're, you're, you know, you're collaborating with this doctor who's had a huge influence on you. What was that? The, the impetus to start the company um, it's phones. So I read Tim Ferriss for our body, which, Great which, book, I, yeah. which I, which <laughs> I, and, um, and realized that, you know, sperm quality is affected. I read that in China, like way before. And, um, sperm quality is affected from the radiation from phone and EMFs, right? Yeah. Radiation from cell phones. Yeah. So, so man, you're leaving your phones in your pocket, that radiation going right next to your genitals, right next to your testicles sack. And it's heating it up. Right. I think is what's happening. Uh, and the radiation, what, what have you, and then that's causing a lower sperm count, right? Yeah, there's been a number of different studies, like what type of radiation and um, like how how long and the positioning and, and all of those things. And they all of the independent studies, most of them show that yeah, there are negative associations with with all of those sperm uh, parameters that we that we associate with um, quality and 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 quantity. And also other parameters like testosterone and like the actual structures of the cell uh, within the testicles and, and like the actual structures of, of like the tissue gets damaged from EMF. But when that, when that um, EMF is removed, when that exposure is removed, the cells have been shown to actually heal. Wow. Like the body heals itself, right? So remove the EMF and the balls can heal. And so... <laughs> In simple terms, guys. <laughs> and um and so we've heard anecdotal reports from our customers about uh, like having gains at the gym or in the bedroom and i won't talk about like my personal experiences but um 
We're we're developing. No, hold on, AD. I gotta cut you off, AD. I brought you on the show so that you could talk about your personal. So yes, I want to know about your personal experience. Like, make it PG thirteen. I mean, you don't have to get me. I don't want any details, but like, what have you noticed? Okay, Okay, yeah. I I I didn't wear my underwear for like two weeks, and I I did a sperm test. Okay, but I have um, I I have such strong and amazing sperm that um they would they're already at like at healthy they're already at healthy um levels yeah and so so the the two weeks wearing my underwear did not change that okay so my my personal sperm tests um resulted like that two However, weeks is probably not enough time i think too yeah sperm's made in 90 days yeah sperm's made in 90 days and... So that would be a cool one to do, like a three-month experiment, not wearing your underwear, <laughs> then a three-month experiment doing. It. I think you'd see some significant uh, difference. But anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, I did. I did not test testosterone or these other sorts of uh, um, parameters. But uh, oxidative stress is something we're looking into. Inflammatory, inflammatory markers, and um, we have some good preliminary results actually that I think we can publish okay. in the next. We can make known to the public at least. It won't be like independently reviewed by like some review board, but um, maybe we do that as well. Yeah. So we're not like we're not like the cell phone companies who talk about um, who basically pay off the science. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, phones don't hurt. They don't bother you. You know, it's crazy too. It's like I have a uh, just for my phone. You know, I have like one of these safe sleeves. They're called. Uh, Defender mm-hmm. Shield makes one too. They block the EMFs. I mean, this phone, man. If you're on the phone for, I think it could be ten minutes. This phone heats up. It is hot, and yeah, uh, it is. I can't imagine <sighs> putting this thing near my head when this thing's on. It's it's very it's it's pretty crazy, you know. Um, I can't. And it it's amazing to me to watch just people when they do that when they're bringing the phone to their head, and I'm just like, whoa, like that's a lot of just radiation and stuff going right into your dome yeah it's all it's like in yellow and red and and perhaps red white and blue and it can only be seen in like in our dreams perhaps but we can't smell or or hear it or or some people can hear it actually some people have like some sort of ringing in their ears and and it it may be like brushed off as like tinnitus or something but yeah 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 um but like there are headaches and, and legitimate health concerns and symptoms that EMF is causing and, and should be blamed for at the doctor. And like I totally encourage people to go to the doctor with their symptoms and say, how is EMF affecting this? How is health, ins- health insurance going to cover this? <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. They're not going to cover that. But but that's nice. That's nice. That's a nice thought. There, there is a class action lawsuit going on right now in San Jose against Apple and Samsung. Really? Yes. Regarding what? EMFs? Regarding the reinsurance companies who insure the health, sorry, insure the pro, uh, product liability companies. Okay, so there's insurance companies, right? Yeah. The insurance companies also need insurance. The, the insurance companies who also need insurance are called reinsurance companies. The reinsurance companies do not cover health liability from EMF. Mm. So Apple Apple is not covered. Like if you get brain cancer, they're going to pay you off. Really? Yeah. They've been paying off people for years. Wow. Um, just Huge brain, war chest for that. On that note, brain cancer, what about tumor? Same thing? Do you know? Or? I mean, if like 100,000 people got together right now, we like made a list. They all signed up and said, we're going to go to the court and say this and this. And we have lawyers who can do that. Yeah. Um, and this anxiety that I experience, you know, daily, it's affected my performance at work. It's, perfect, it's affected my um, psychological health with my family and whatnot. Um, you think that's a big those, factor of, of anxiety? Things. You think EMFs is a big factor of anxiety? EMF, I think it, it's related, yeah. but, but, um, but the addiction part of, of, of how like the, like a social media website is, is, um, is made. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and that, I think that, um, ha- has a bit more traction than, um, like the EMF aspect. The, this, this, um, class action suit is like the first one Got it. was filed like last year or so. Cool. 
So, um, so all this, you, you created some amazing fabric and, and clothing. Um, what did you notice, you know, when you started wearing your, your clothing that was, that was blocking, um, EMFs? Um, so, so when did we start making the fabric? No. So like when, when you, when you develop your company, um, to block EMFs from, you know, from you, you have your clothing line and specifically, you know, the underwear, what are some things that you just anecdotally noticed and some customers, what, mm -hmm. have, what have they all been noticing by just wearing your, your Faraday tech, uh, EMF blocking underwear? Yeah. Um, so, so we wanted to make something more comfortable than normal clothes and that was a huge challenge and because silver fabrics are generally um, very stiff and they're not comfortable mm. um, a lot of our competitors if not all of them um, use basically off-the-shelf fabrics from you know, chinese suppliers and then they they're usually made for like you know like a, a blind or or you know something else not underwear and so when they're applied to <laughs> when, they, when they're applied to underwear they, they they're, they're not as comfortable as normal underwear and so we, we wanted to make something really comfortable so we redesigned our fabric and um it's it's double-sided and incorporated like more stretch spandex type um um yarn and um i've been developing it over the last um year or so in our in our own labs actually nice and yeah. um, where we do our own testing we test every batch of yarn we do every um uh fabric tests in-house um because we can only certify like once right we, we we create fabric we certify it at the independent lab but we also like test every batch of yarn and uh and fabric for the for quality cool for quality and then as well as have you ever done any like emf like test for your for your for your underwear and and uh or short or shirts have you done anything you know like i know they have those like rf meters or whatever that actually measure electromagnetic frequency have you ever done anything like that or of course yeah yeah we have uh we have a few videos okay. of that and and uh, we actually encourage viewers to, to go out and get an emf meter themselves and uh and use it around your house and and test our product compare our product with others and see which ones are blocking better yeah there you have it um by the way i have the underwear it's freaking phenomenal man it's, it, like you said it's very comfortable that was one of the first things i i noticed super comfortable i'm really uh, impressed by it and i'm excited for your uh, the shirts that are going to be dropping in the fall Yes, sir. No, they'll be dropping. Um, they'll be dropping sooner than that. Okay. And we also have we also have some women's products in the in the shoot. Nice. And um, and and hopefully we're gonna get into to to other stuff, but we'll we'll keep that under wraps for the moment. Okay. And um, we love to get suggestions from like from customers because because they they experience the the problems, um, which I mean we do too, but they they have more insight, I think. And uh, like the house is 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 an issue and and, and things like that. But, and there are other solutions, right? Like there, like the, there are the, people on Amazon. Like there are these stickers which are complete bogus. Like those do not work. Right. They they may. What stickers are we talking about? Tell me about these stickers. I'm talking about like the these like shiny stickers that you put on the back of cell phones oh, or, yeah, or yeah, anything yeah, yeah, or any yeah. technology. Yeah. Which claim to which claim to like neutralize EMF. Maybe there's some sort of placebo effect there, but test those too. Test those. And how does that phone case work? Like when the phone is covered, it it um, it works harder. So it's it's actually emitting more. It, unless that phone case is like channeling that channeling that EMF away from your head, then then it would be uh, it could be beneficial. But your battery is going to be drained. Like. Even other, even other silver clothing, EMF clothing, can be can be potentially dangerous to raising body voltage, and with like toxins. A lot of the EMF fabrics, um, if not all of them, are um, rusty. They rust. Silver sulfide is the is is what rust is, and that has risk of, of getting into your body, and uh, and doing damage. Uh -oh. And so, so that that 
um, that probably shouldn't be on the skin. That's probably not. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and and so that that's what we've done with our products. We've um, we've removed the the metal from the skin um, after discussions with with EMF experts like um, I don't know if I should say this publicly, but um, building biologists and another folks um as well as um as well as um you know just normal um, scientists and doctors um and, and, and getting advice from them on on uh you know the you know what could metal on the skin be doing and um not good raises body voltage and it could increase your exposure it could actually yeah it could make exposure even worse so it could like like and I've heard this if you're wearing something um you know cheaper or not like your the product that you're making you could actually like kind of become an antenna is what you're saying and attract more radio frequencies if you're wearing some type of uh different product right that might be ta- claiming to protect you from EMFs but in reality it's just it's making you an antenna your body Yeah yeah there there are a lot of folks out there who talk about metal being an antenna but when I think of an antenna, I think of an antenna being something that uh, receives data and then encodes that so it can be read by something else. Mm. So like uh, an earring or a tattoo um, in, the, in that sense, I guess, are, 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 are definitely not antennas. They could be attractive to EMF. Mm. So they could attract more EMF, but they are not antennas because antennas encode data. Interesting. What uh and decode data. Yeah. What uh what other things are you doing besides the EMF um besides what you know obviously you know you have a passion for EMFs and and blocking them and and at least regulating them. What else are you doing in terms of EMFs? Is there anything or or should I say is there anything else in terms of just your health, overall health that that you focus on um and that you found valuable? Yeah, EMF is like the, the the biggest health issue that's that's the least talked about. But I've been a health freak like my entire, actually probably most. I played sports, so I was always like into protein and like egg yolks and things like that. Yeah. But when I lived in China, it's so dirty there, so toxic. And that's when I started like figuring out like how do I get my health better. I got into smoothies, I started reading like biohacking websites, and uh, eating like super as healthy as possible. Um, and then and then now I'm I'm like extremely like minimalist too mm. like um mm-hmm. i try to do things like as efficient as possible like i'll wake up in the morning and i'll have uh like a shot of lemon juice and and red apple cider with turmeric and black pepper and i'll have some like raw eggs and, and then i'll be breakfast just have to like rinse out the cups don't have to do anything else and then i'm good and for like a, a while and i can do a smoothie and then at night probably like a piece of meat and like vegetables so i'm on that keto yeah 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 <laughs> So you do a lot of intermittent fasting as well then? Yes, sometimes not by choice, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of the minimalist lifestyle and being busy, right? Being a yeah, owner of a company. You kind of just forget to eat, yeah. which is fine. Um any uh any other resources that you'd recommend that uh for people to check out um in, in terms of EMFs, are there any good books out there you'd recommend people go look for, um, specifically for EMFs, um, or any or any other yeah. good resources that people can can find some good information on? That 1984 report is probably the best. Which to, is on your website. Like a... Yes, okay. I'll share the link. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, it's it's not easily found. It's sort of in, in the uh, in the backlinks, but yeah. Um, other books are created to sell. And so they're not like very informative as formative as they could be as the 1984 report is. Okay. I think to, to learn the most about EMF, you should probably read like a physics textbook or just do a primer on physics and then on like cell health and probably like three, three, like three books worth of reading. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the studies, the studies are like super dense but they are um, super interesting if you're into that thing. Yeah. EMF portal. Mm-hmm. EMF portal is the best resource to find studies. They have like almost mm-hmm. all of them. Very cool. Anything, uh, anything I'm, I'm going to jump into the lightning round of questions pretty soon, but I wanted to ask you before we go there, anything that I didn't ask you that you, that you wish I had asked you. 
Um, let's see. When are we going to do this in person? <laughs> um, man, when the stars align, I mean, uh, you know, um, yeah, we, it's funny. No, nobody knows this, but we, we had been planning this interview for like a couple of weeks and, uh, things kind of happened and we had to move our schedule around, but, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to do it. Uh, we'll definitely have to get together sooner than later. Um, if anybody knows me, it's, it has nothing to do with COVID. I'm not scared of COVID. So I got no problem meeting in person. Um, it's just more of a timing schedule kind of thing. That's a good question, though. I got, I got some extra mask. I'll kick you some. Don't, I don't need it. My immune system is right here. I don't need a mask. <laughs> All right. <laughs> By the way, speaking of masks, you know, uh, anybody that's listening, go check out the Denmark study. Great study. That's probably, like you said, in the backlinks, nobody's uh, talking about. Talks all about masks and basically how they're a big joke. So um, check it out if you have it. I'll read that. That's a good one. Um, all right. Hey, my man, AD, are you ready for some lightning round questions? Thunder. Let's do it. If the old you could see the new you, what would the new you say? The old you could say. Man, I'm old now. But it'd probably say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the old man, you into the young you. <laughs> man, I can't wait to be your age. Tell me more. Tell me more about that. What do you mean? What would you? What do you mean? I, I think. I think as a youngster, I wanted to grow up mm. like too fast. I wanted to be. I wanted to be an adult. I wanted to be a man. I wanted to be older, and um, so that's what the 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 young me would say to the old me. Yeah, yeah. To the young, to the current me. I totally relate with that. Now I wish I was. Now I wish I. Now I wish I was the young me and had no responsibilities and all that other kind of good stuff. But pros and cons. Sure. Uh, um, twenty hindsight is is like ten ten probably. Yeah. For sure. Um, what are some uh, what are some choices that made you who you were today, or that made you who, who you are today? Sorry. Major turning points and inflection points were probably um, going to China for sure. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, that's such a tough question. Um, that's why I asked it. Traveling, like <laughs> spending money, like spending a ton of money traveling as a, as a youngster. And, and taking advantage of like all those opportunities instead of focusing like on career early on is, um, is, is, probably, is probably why, um, well, maybe I am today because I'm like much more tolerant and um, adaptive, I'd say. Yeah. yeah, I can totally relate to that. I, I, I tell people the same thing. I, you know, I got to travel and I, when I was in college, I got to travel to in, in Italy. I was there for three months. Best experience of my life. And some of the things you said, adaptive, tolerative. You know, it was just like when you when you're in the United States, you think like, oh, my God, I, I mean, I don't know what people think, but I would say for me, my mind was very just closed. It was very like the United States is great. I don't know anything better. It's it's the best. And I don't know anything different. Right. And mm -hmm. um, it just really opened my eyes up to just like, wow, like how much bigger we all are. And uh, yeah, I mean, just being around other cultures and other people and just it was definitely one of the best experiences. Yeah. And I wish I could have done it longer, actually. Like you said, push off, push off a career as long as you can, because that'll always be there for you. Believe me. Um, but being able to just, you know, go at your own pace and just learn, you can learn, you learn so much more. I feel like being around others and they make you a better person because they're giving you ideas and viewpoints that you would never see if you were still wherever you grew up or the town that you grew up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, totally. And you're, ex you're exposed to like all these novel situations as well, yeah. which is like one of the things that Einstein said is like great for intelligence, like boosting IQ. I mm. <laughs> love it. What are uh, some exciting projects that you're working on right now? Um, I know you, you mentioned projects. something earlier that you said uh, <laughs> you said I can't really talk too much about it, so maybe that was one of them you just want to put on the shelf. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it's some exciting projects. There, there are a lot. We got a lot of stuff going on, and um, I mean, we have stuff on Instagram daily, like free tips on like how what to do for EMF that that we're putting out, 
Um, we got GoFunds. We have the, like, like I said, we have some preliminary studies, some, some good uh, early stage results on the health effects that, that we're going to be releasing hopefully pretty soon, just depending on uh, like the final analytical re re results and like what our advisors say about the independent review board. Yeah. Um, but um, we've been working on that for, for years. I'd say like any exciting things coming up. Yes, we have a huge announcement in February uh, for women that uh, we're really looking forward to. I'm excited. I'm pumped. And, you know, just for people that don't know, you actually just revise your, your, um, the underwear, you know, you just got a huge upgrade. So that, that was huge too. You didn't even mention that. I'll mention it for you. Um, so go check it out. The design's even better. And, um, there's some upgrades to the underwear. So that's pretty cool. Oh yeah. We're, we're like constantly innovating and, and, and creating new products and making them better. Yep. Anybody, uh, anybody in the biohacking or wellness world that you follow that inspires you? Let's see. I'd say, I'd say you, man. Now <laughs> I was going to say besides <laughs> me, besides, I've been following you for a while and, and, <laughs> and you are inspiring man. you have like really good energy. I think, uh, I think if you put like full time into, into the health thing, you would be, you'd be up there. You'd be, up, you'd be near the top definitely Thanks, in a few years. I appreciate that. And, and, um, I look to let's see, like, like some of them have gone like totally corporate. Like Dave Asprey is, is like t off the like edge, dude. He's so corporate; it's ridiculous now. Yeah. Um, like I don't believe anything that guy says. Really? Ben Greenfield. Ben Greenfield's the man. Tim Ferriss. I'd say, Cyborg. Um, I mean, there are a number of number of biohackers: Todd Shipman, Thaddeus Owen, um, Josh Trent. Um, these guys are, are people that I'm looking up to for, for like biohacking advice and, um, and whatnot. They wear our products. Um, let's see. Yeah. Tim Ferriss was like, was like the first one who really inspired me to, to get into biohacking. It's crazy, right? That you mm -hmm. mentioned Tim Ferriss because I don't even associate him with like biohacking anymore or you know why? Well, I mean, back when he was doing it, it wasn't called that. That's probably why. Um, but yeah, he was really one of the first ones doing all that stuff. And people forget about that. Like he did the, I remember reading the four hour body and I'm like, this is cool. Um, and then it, Legit. yeah. And then it really just took off with, I think Asprey and Greenfield and some of the others that really just took it to a whole nother level. And then, you know, Tim Ferriss started doing some other projects. He just, you know, so he did something different, but, but yeah, it's funny that you say Tim Ferriss. I remember back in the day reading his, uh, four hour body and just thinking like, Whoa, this guy is. I love the stuff he's doing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Timmy. Yeah, Timmy. <laughs> he's an awesome. He got into like Silicon Valley startups for a bit. Then he like, I think he got stressed out. Maybe, he maybe his, he moved to Austin. I think he's having a much better time in Austin. It's, Austin seems like a great town. It sounds like it. I went to Austin last July. It was amazing. It was a good time. Yeah. yeah. I was there for paleo. Good Paleo's was awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. I want to go. Yeah, it's it's when they, when it's, it's less nervous, man. When I got off the plane from San Jose to Austin, it was like a huge breath of fresh air. It was like something was lifted off my chest. And like the people in in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley are just like go 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 everything now now now. And yeah. Austin, it was like complete like just like wow, this feels like home. Uh, one day you're gonna have to come visit me in Idaho. You're gonna feel the same thing. It's just gonna be like relaxing. Okay, so it's nature. It's not the people. Um, it's probably, it's a combination of both. That's a combination of both, but it's just, it's a different, it's a different vibe. Like you said, you talk about EMFs, vibration, it's a different, you feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How much of that is psychological though? I really want to test like these types of things. I was having yeah. a conversation with, with this German guy in, in Germany, uh, about, uh, about actually game changing, like next generation EMF fabrics, like sort of like three years down the road and um yeah they're making they're making a fabric with they're making a yarn that that uh that has plastic around the metal anyways um he was telling me about the chinese are like telepathic hmm. he was saying the chinese hmm. people are strong community and like work together very well and 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 partly isn't there like something in like social community and like in like community is like some social aspect as uh, us being like animals right um that we are 
we are somewhat telepathic and i think it's starting to be proven yeah i am i'm not i'm not versed in that so i don't i don't know i love to learn yeah, there's an eeg's test there's like eeg I, i've only like started to brush the surface but i think i think that this is something like biohackers could jump on and it would be super interesting to learn about tele telepathy it's something that like mark zuckerberg has, has said is the future of communication but he wants to like do it with um do it like virtual environments right okay why can't we just be like yogis doing yoga <laughs> <laughs> and communicating with like the whole world just thinking about it i wish there's i think it's possible well yeah i can't wait to hear more any um any books that you would recommend people read like i'm a big reader is there any books that like one to three books that like just kind of change you or just um really impacted your life Man, there's this Indian book that talks about, um, it, it's sort of, it's it's like a Bible and, that, and it's written in that way. It was written so long ago, but there are insights in there that um, refer and talk about like these Indian superhuman people who, who like do feats that are like, that we don't really recognize as human. Like, for example, like they're, like we eat, we eat food to get energy, right? We, we feel hungry, then we want to eat. But there are other ways to get energy, and that, and we don't we um, like according according to these stories, these anecdotal reports, there there are people in, in India, at least in the past, who did not eat and they lived for like years, and they were absorbing energy from like the sun, from the from the plants, and um, and there are like techniques and, and like different things that are in this book. I forget the title of it. It's like it's like this weird. I can't even pronounce it, but I'll send it to you. Okay, good. Send it to me. <laughs> So I can put it in the show notes. Yeah, let me know. Screenshot it to me later. Um, anything? Any other books, or was that like just the one that jumps off in your mind? Oh, that one. Let's see. Like one to three. Um, if that's the only an one. Anti-fragile. Anti-fragility. Anti-fragility. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, what, what was that one? Yeah. Uh, Nasad. Yep. I read that like three years ago. That was good. On. Um. Yeah, that's a must read. I couldn't put that book down. What else? Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Okay. That's perfect. That's enough. That's enough for people to to dive into. Any um any rituals or hacks or practices that you kind of follow on a regular basis? Like some people do gratitude journals. Is there anything that you do on a regular basis? I do all the th I'll do most of the things that like people are talking about these days, but like some things that people don't talk about these days, I think is like right before bed. Because like that eight hours or six hours of sleep is like oftentimes unproductive. Um, especially if we're like looking at our phone or something, but yeah. it's like, a, it's a really valuable time to get a lot done actually. And to like work through issues that you're having uh, any issues, work issues for, for me and, and to sort of set a, um, a, 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 like a construct in your mind, like right before you fall asleep, like as you're falling asleep, like, and I learned this from, um, the link, the founder of LinkedIn, Reed Hoffman. He talks about this okay. about um like setting setting up constraints in your mind like well you have budget constraint you have time constraint you have some other resource constraint like what's the issue and and then like you're just dreaming all night like ways to ways to to solve it solve those issues and that, that's like one con like yeah. it's like setting a construct before bed I love like that. using your I want you to finish this sentence. 2020 was the greatest gift of my life because dot, dot, dot. Because I learned that whatever happens in this world, regardless of what happens in the darkest moments, it will always be better. I love that, dude. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, yeah. That's a great way. From the soul. That's a great way. From the heart, brother. That's, that's a great way to end it. Um, last but not least, my man, uh, where can people find you? Me personally, I kind of I keep a low profile, but you can find phones anywhere. We're gonna we're gonna have it at uh, Walmart, and no, I'm kidding, but we're <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're at www.itsphones.com. When Walmart opens up, hopefully we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're 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 a little bit pricey. But if you if, if you want a discount code, I'm happy to create one for um for your audience. Yeah, let's do it, man. 
All right, let me uh, let me know what you, let's see. Joel Evan, Joel Evan 20. Is that too much? Is that too many words? Joel Evan 20? Let's do it. Joel Evan 20 for 20% off. We'll kick you a little affiliate too Boom. if you'd like. That's awesome. <laughs> um, seriously, appreciate that, man. And um, yeah, can't wait to uh, finally meet in person. Yeah, let's do some MMA. Let's I know, I know the AKA fighters. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. I've been wanting to go out there. My my dad grew up with um, I know now I'm forgetting his name, but the founder of AKA Gym, Javier Mendez. Okay. We used to, as a kid, we used to go watch him fight at the at the San Jose Event Center. He used to be this champion kickboxer. It was amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. We can go check it out. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, my, See the champ story. All right, my brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Cheers.